Welcome to today's program and today we're looking at issues around ageing and since I've recently become a grandmother I decided that I can't kid myself <laughs> anymore and I have decided to see myself as an older woman. So I need help. <laughs> so I have uh, ask the Older Women's Network if they can give me a few tips on ageing. So I hope you enjoy the program. We'll help you come out as an older woman. <laughs> <laughs> we'll explore the issues. Hi, I'm Beth. I'm the coordinator of the Older Women's Network in New South Wales. And I really like to encourage older women to get hold of their local network and um, find out what it's about and join it. I think perhaps if you've heard about the network or seen our theatre group performing it might have awakened your interest and what we're finding is more and more women are starting to connect with the network probably through our wellness programs. We've just had the wellness launch um, of Kicking Up Autumn Leaves which is women owning wellness and that's really important in our organisation. What that program's about is women taking control of their own health and programs that have been designed by the women themselves to actually improve their own health and in the, in the long run that's a big saving for the government because those women are actually looking after their own well-being. It's about not just your physical health but your mental health by joining with a network of other women you're you've got that kind of support that sees you through so you know that's that's really important that's what the network's about okay. is there such a thing as an older men's network there is <laughs> there's a there's a network there's uh, you know a brotherhood it's called omni older men new ideas and the husband um he's he's now passed away but the husband of one of our members um set that up so what do you consider the biggest issues around ageing, the ageing baby boomer? Well, the age, well, ageing and the ageing baby boomer are two separate things, but I think for women who are facing their ageing now, it's actually acknowledging that that's where they're at. Uh, I think for the baby boomers, they are the generation who actually invented youth culture and wanted to own it and it's very difficult for those women to actually come to terms with the notion they are getting older and to face age and embrace age and actually enjoy um, what age has to offer but also come to terms with the difficulties that they face now that they're getting older and um, that that can be hard but I think if you join with a, a network of other women who have been through some of those problems and some of those challenges then those problems are a lot easier to cope with. Someone said to me, the secret is growing older. You keep growing. You do. You keep growing and you keep finding new resources within yourself. And um, I think it's the challenges, you know, because your life changes. There's a lot of changes to cope with. And I think that's, for the baby boomers particularly, that's one of the hardest things. I was really surprised with our, um, we, we have a group within the network that we reached out to last year, we had a forum for younger older women, um, which was aimed in the Sydney region at actually finding these women who hadn't yet identified with the network and hadn't yet identified with the concept of growing older. And um, this, this group, we've sort of followed them through and what really surprised me when we said, well, you know, what is it that you want to, what are the issues you want to explore? And uh, surprisingly enough, they came up with one of the issues they wanted to look at was grief. And I thought, grief? Um, okay, well, what do baby boomers have to grieve about? And surprisingly, our older members thought that they really um, were more in touch with grieving. They felt being closer to, um, you know, older, old age.
name's Alex Franchek. I'm a fitness instructor and I've just finished a class for women's wellness at Abraham's Knot Knots Hall in the city. Um, we run many programs here for the well, uh, women's wellness, uh, older women's network. Uh, one of them is gentle exercise. They have Tai Chi and many other things. Um, my class starts on Wednesday at 9.30 and we go for an hour and a lot of the members that uh, belong to Older Win Women's Network come to the class and we have a lot of fun. Um, part of the uh, gentle exercise component is false prevention. Um, we do exercises to help our balance, our coordination and just flexibility and just to maintain our daily activities uh, with the best quality in, in our ageing. I'm also a member of the Older Women's Network and I would like to just tell everyone how wonderful exercise is. It, it prevents depression, we uh, all meet together so there's no social isolation, we make friends and it's just a uh, absolutely wonderful facility that uh, Older Women's Network provide and we just would like as many women in the community to come and join us, have fun and just open up their lives uh, because as we get older we can actually do more things, we have more time and it's there for us all. So, I also work for Women's Wellness in Bankstown where I do a water class every Tuesday from 10 to 11. We have a large class of about 20 women. We have the water class at the RSL in Meredith Street and again that's a lot of fun and that's probably for women who find uh, land exercise or it may just be their choice to do things in the water where they have um, they're able to do more things which they probably couldn't do in a land class. So that's one of the, um, one of the other classes I do in the area. And again, I work uh, with the Greek community and I run gentle exercises classes for a group of Greek women who meet every Monday. And there's about 15 to 20 of them and they enjoy uh, the social aspect, the exercise, and just being able to get together every week and feel, feel much healthier. A lot of the women tell me since they've been doing gentle exercise that they feel much more flexible, they don't have so much pain in their joints and they don't feel isolated. They have companionship from other women. Um, my history in gentle exercise, I did start gentle exercise um, instructing probably six years ago I started I decided to do a course because I felt that as I was aging and since I had been in the uh, gym scene doing my own exercise looking after my own body I felt that as I aged I could help other women um, enjoy exercise so I did the course and now I find it's the best thing in my life because as I age I can keep fit with my clients and I I find that's one of the most rewarding things of my life because my other uh, background is I'm a registered nurse and I work in aged care so I see the other side of life. Um, so I guess um, exercise is the thing, it's called self-help, it's the only thing we can do for ourselves to maintain, maintain ourselves in the best condition as we age. Please come along anytime you like. Uh, make friends, have fun and just live, live to the fullness of your heart. My name is Peggy Hewitt. I'm a member of the Older Women's Network on the New South Wales Management Team, a member of Sydney Group, and have been since 1980. Seven. Okay. So, Peg, how did the Older Women's Network come about? Before I knew of it, my mother-in-law was working in the pensioner organisation, the New South Wales Combined Pensioners, and she could see there were a lot of women with very little research being done on their needs. So they set about to get a, a little bit of money, and they got a little bit of money to 
uh, uh, what they called older women's workshops and from that the older women's network arose. It, it was um, done by two younger women who did the history and then when the money ran out so did the workers so it sort of went into recess for a while. In 1987 they called to set it all up again and we started it off by thinking of uh, making older women visible. Okay. So that's one issue about um, ageing, you do become invisible? Mm -hmm. It was the main issue that the women sitting around the table there in those early days from all sorts of organisations felt that older women were not invisible. And there was a story from a health workshop in South Australia where this older woman said she was working along this, walking along the street and suddenly found herself stepping to one side. So she decided she'd stop stepping to one side and what happened? They knocked her over. Just do not see grey hair and glasses on the street. Try it if you've got grey hair and glasses and see. Mm. Invisibility of older people is still much to the fore. Is there any research on why our culture has this? It's a youth based culture. You have to be young, thin and beautiful to be seen. Standing in, in shops, watch who gets served. Mm. If there's not a queue being formed. So the Older Women's Network has done made enormous advances in this field. Well, yes. Whether um, you know, I think we've we've done a lot of uh, in lots of areas uh, as much as one can do with a, an organisation. We're not a big organisation, but we get a newsletter out monthly, and it's all produced by the women. Down through the years, we've covered. Uh, mainly in the health area, I think we've done really big strides and it seems right from the very word go, health was a, a, the main focus of, of what everybody could decide was important. And uh, we've done a little bit on superannuation, um, we've, we've certainly made huge inroads into wellness for older women. We've set up uh, a Bankstown group, a Sutherland group, they've been active over the north side down at Penrith. Now Sydney has a, a Wednesday group. So wellness has really been uh, a large factor and we're just coming to uh, a conference that's going to launch a uh, research program on women who've been involved in these uh, health organisations to see just how beneficial it's been and, and to let the government know uh, what's needed for older women's health. Okay, so the Older Women's Network has uh, the wellness programs, mm -hmm. uh, you have uh, Aboriginal study groups. We have an Aboriginal study group. We have um, women who have a movie group who go out to see movies and just come back and have coffee and discuss them. A book reading group that read books and discuss them. And some of the other activities that the Older Women's Organisation has been domestic violence. We've had a very, very um, big conference and we've we've uh, launched two big uh, made hangings on all the things that affect older women and domestic violence and also you know the whole question of in our theatre group we've had a 15 minute segment on domestic violence where the violence that was perpetrated on the women of the theatre group were very bravely spoken about and um, there's no doubt about it, the, the, the way women relate to that when we finish the show and come away, how they would talk to us about what was happening to them and some of them couldn't even take home the brochures because the husband would see them and, and would, they would become violent towards them because they were outside talking about their personal lives. Mm -hmm. So it's an, it's an incredible... It's an incredible area because there's very little for older women in domestic violence. When you sometimes ring up some of the numbers they give you, they don't even know themselves what there is out there. Mm. Very few refugees for, for older women. Even in the women's refuges, they, they're basically for younger women, they weren't for older women. So that's, it's a big area that has to be looked at for older women because it's not only domestic violence with husbands beating wives, it's also younger younger children take advantage of their parents and, and their finances and their the home, taking over the homes and selling the homes and putting the older women out sometimes. Very, very, very big area to be worked on.
shouldn't be carrying your handbag slung over your shoulder like that. Don't you know you shouldn't be home looking after your grandchildren? Don't, don't, don't. What can I do? I won't stay inside forever. A one and a two and a one, two, three. Don't hide in your closets like they're urging us to do. Give a little whistle. <coughs> Give a little whistle. <coughs> Out of sight means out of mind, that's what they have us do. Wake them with your whistle, <coughs> wake them with your whistle. <coughs> Not just a little peep, but as hard as hell. <coughs> and if your pop is weak, how about cowbells? <coughs> We're not about to hide in fear for weeks or months. Thank you. 
My name is Peggy, and Effective sums up how I've been made to feel by my past partners over the last 50 years. Too fat, my man hated fat women. Too dumb, long silences, what's the use of talking? Got nothing to say. That's right, Judith, I didn't have any black eyes or bruises, but a whole lifetime of personal doubt. My name is Merle, and I speak of that insidious type of violence too, not physical, but verbal and demeaning, which undermines your self-esteem and well-being, always having to be on guard of the alcoholic partner whose depression swings from high to low. You get around as though you're treading on eggshells all the time, uh, wary of what you say in case it's taken up the long way, extreme feelings of guilt, self-denial and anger. Well, my name is Lucy. Domestic violence was a part of my life for over 50 years. A disturbed father who threatened to cut our throats as we slept meant many terror-stricken nights. An overly affectionate grandfather with wandering hands. A husband with low self-esteem who answered any threat to his power structure with violence. I was lucky, though left with emotional scars, I survived. The law must be changed and enforced so women and children no longer have to live in a dangerous war zone called home. I'm Dorothy and I've buried my domestic violence and it's only now that I realise how cleverly my husband was able to put me down. I'll give you an example. Kids seated at the table, everybody waiting for their pudding. Long wait. My husband lights a cigarette and says, I hate this waiting between courses. <laughs> what can you do? And then we had long silences, backs turned as we came home, and, and, and months of no speaking. And I reckon that's called violence by silence. <laughs> My name's Nina and I grew up in a home that was outwardly very happy and respectable but what went on behind closed doors was a very another, another story completely. Um, I have survived uh, sexual, emotional and physical abuse and I've spent my life doing that and I'm very glad that we're all here today and it's coming out in the open. My name is Peggy. <laughs> I've given all my best to pass the use by test and tackle life with less. Am I now to be seen as some suggest a parasite or else a pest? I won't allow that rock to go unchallenged. Jeff! Yeah. 